Hello, this is a screencast on uh, setting up the database server on Amazon RDS. Uh, my name is Janakiram MSV. In this presentation, we'll look at uh, what really powers the contemporary application and how do we deal with the databases on the cloud, followed by the key concepts of Amazon RDS. And finally, I'll show you how to migrate the database to Amazon RDS. Today, if we look at the contemporary application landscape, they primarily utilize certain building blocks that are very essential for developing the applications. They happen to be compute, storage, networking, and database. These building block services are exposed to the application through application services and management services. By leveraging the right APIs exposed by these services, applications will be able to leverage the building block services, which are very essential for developing applications. Whether you are developing the application for physical hardware, physical infrastructure, or cloud-based infrastructure, these are the essential building blocks. When we look at Amazon Web Services, it's not very different. AWS has the foundation services in the form of compute, storage, databases, and networking. Today, our focus is how do we use the databases on the cloud? When it comes to running the databases on the cloud, there are multiple techniques. For example, when we look at AWS, you can leverage uh, the service called Relational Database Service or RDS, where Amazon hosts the database and also manages for us. If you are comfortable, you can also spin up instances and run your own database within EC2. This gives you the flexibility of running a database of your choice that may not be supported by RDS. Then there is Amazon SimpleDB, which is a flexible, schema-less database meant for configurations, metadata, and smaller NoSQL database needs. Instead of running a NoSQL database like a MongoDB or a Cassandra, you could also leverage Amazon's own NoSQL database called DynamoDB, which is extremely performant and cost-effective. RDS, EC2, and DynamoDB support the new generation SSD-based provisioned IOPS, which lets you get better performance from your database IOPS. So today's focus is more on Amazon Relational Database Service. So RDS is a web service to set up, operate, and scale a database on the cloud. It gives you access to familiar databases like MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. Apart from letting you create and, and import the database, it also manages patching, backup, and recovery. So in a way, RDS also handles the DBA part of the database. For select databases, it does support scale out and read replicas, which will give you an easy mechanism to scale out the data tier. Like most of the services of Amazon, RDS has no upfront investment. You can start with pay-as-you-go model and keep adding more database resources as you go along. Like EC2, RDS has multiple instance types. As on date, there are variety of instance types ranging from micro to high memory quadruple extra large. Each instance type comes with a different configuration and a different price point. Depending on the workload that you are migrating to the cloud, you could look at one of these instance types to ensure that your application has optimal database performance. So let's get started with uh, Amazon RDS. There are basically four steps to get started. The first one is signing up for RDS. The second step is to launch the database instance. Third step is to configure security and authorize access. And finally, we could connect from the client and use the database that is provisioned within RDS. So let me sh start with a demo and show you how I migrate a database running within EC2 instance to Amazon RDS. OK, so this is the AWS Management Console. And assuming we are done with the sign up, we are currently at the EC2 dashboard. So as we see, there is uh, one instance running, and this is called the shop server. This is actually running a LAMP application, which is basically an e-commerce portal. So let's try and access this portal 
to see what's inside that. So this is one of the e-commerce portals powered by the LAMP stack and obviously there is MySQL as a database inside the VM. So our task is to take this database and move it to RDS. So once we have this application running uh, and, and, and once we made up our mind to move the database to RDS, the next step is to go ahead and provision the database within the RDS environment. So here we have the RDS console within the AWS management console and I'm going to click on launch a DB instance. So this is going to bring up the DB instance wizard and as we notice there are multiple flavors and multiple uh, varieties of database that we can launch. To be more precise we have MySQL, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. Depending on the license agreement and depending on how you want to deal with the database you can choose one of the flavors within each of these databases. I want to launch a MySQL database so I'm going to select the first one and move to the next step. So this is where we are actually going to configure the database engine and, and give some inputs for RDS to provision the database. So the database engine happens to be MySQL and the licensing model is of course it's open source so we have nothing much to choose here. You could also select from uh, various flavors and versions of MySQL. So the default is 5.5.27 so I'm going to choose that and like EC2 we also need to choose the DB instance class. So depending on the configuration there are multiple options to choose from so I want to keep this simple so I'm going to choose T1 micro so this is the entry level database instance type. We can also launch this database in multi AZ mode. Multi AZ stands for multiple availability zone deployment. What it means is RDS will provision two instances of the database across two availability zones and in case one of the availability zones faces an issue it can automatically fail over to the other availability zone and this is completely transparent to the clients. The clients will never get to know that there has been a failover. So this will ensure high availability of the database at the back end. So to keep it simple I'm going to choose no. We don't require multi as for this and it can also allow RDS to automatically perform minor version upgrades. Then comes in the actual configuration of the database. So what is the initial storage that you would want to uh, allocate. So let's say we start with 5 GB and then the database instance identifier. This is the name through which we are going to identify the database. So let's call this shop RDS. So this will now create an endpoint that will start with shop RDS and after that we can give a master username and a password. So this is going to be a part of the connection string. In the next step we can configure additional options. So you can leave either uh, the database name empty or you could also choose to give a name and if you are not launching multi AZ uh, RDS you could also choose the availability zone. And then comes in the security group uh, more on this little later but essentially the security group performs the same role as the EC2 security group. So this is going to make sure that the traffic is either coming through a predefined security group or a predefined IP address. So this is a great mechanism to prevent unauthorized access and to block unauthorized uh, uh, connections to RDS. So you could configure the traffic that originates only from either EC2 or a specified predefined IP address. So I choose the security group then we move to the next step where we configure the backup retention period and this is going to ensure that uh, we can easily restore the database. If you want to perform backups at a specific time window you could also choose that depending on the load pattern of your application. If you choose no preference Amazon has uh, a, a ad hoc schedule of performing backups. You could also choose the maintenance window where the database is maintained. Again if you don't choose a default time window is chosen for you.
then we go ahead review the settings once and then we are going to uh, launch the database so this is going to launch the database and make it accessible for the application after a few minutes uh, we'll have the RDS provisioning our database so this is going to be available through this endpoint called shop RDS followed by random C name that is generated for our database so let's go ahead and log into our EC2 instance so I will use the SSH command to log in to the instance that we created here so let me first grab this and log in to the EC2 instance so here we are and then I quickly become a root user because I want to configure this application and then here we have uh, a file called db.sql so what I really want to do at this point is to actually stop the running database and then uh, make sure that the database is completely stopped so this should now throw an error so we'll leave this as it is and we'll refresh this after we are done with the migration to RDS so now what I'm going to do is to run this command which is going to import our database to the RDS so I will give the password and in a second this is going to import the database from the local EC2 instance to the RDS uh, instance so now we'll open the settings dot include file and here currently uh, we see that the database is pointing to the local host and this is where I need to make a change so I'm going to replace local host and get the endpoint of the RDS server save this come back to the browser and do a refresh now this works exactly as it worked with the local database because we just changed the connection string and pointed that to the RDS instance so that was a quick demo of uh, moving the database to Amazon RDS uh, for more videos and uh, resources please visit getcloudready.com slash ebooks and to watch the videos that we have been recording you can visit cloudready.tv thanks for watching this video on Amazon RDS stay tuned for more uh, this is Janaki Ram thank you